temperate, yet unadulterous, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who oh, looked oh. to the gods. He says, go again. According, Hey, Hosea, I need you to remember, you see how much I keep coming back after them? You know how I love my children, even after they do A, B, C, D, and I go back to them, and they disobey me, and I go back and save them, and they disobey me. I want you to go again and get your wife. Now, here's the question, right? Imagine you are in Hosea's shoes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgave you once, I forgave you twice, I knew what you were up to, and I still gave you a chance. Now you've blown it, now you're in trouble. You gonna go find him? <laughs> and you know, the story kind of cuts it quickly here, but Hosea doesn't know where his wife is, really. He's walking around going, hey, hey, listen, have you, have you seen my wife? And you're like, no, I, I haven't. You know, he's going door by door. He's like, hey, have you, have you, seen, have you seen Gomer anywhere? And they're like, no, I, I, I haven't. And he knows he has to go to that area where it's kind of known for prostitution. And he thinks maybe that's where she probably is. So he goes into those areas and... He sees those guys who get into that kind of stuff and he, you know, he has to ask them, hey, have you, have you seen my wife, Gomer? And, 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 and you know, the, one of the guys just kind of like, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize you were still together. She, I, I'm so sorry, I, I saw her last night, but I haven't seen her since. And he's going around and they're like, oh, I, I saw her last week, Jose, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize you guys are still, and he's going, he's have, you know, he's got a reputation. And imagine the embarrassment. Imagine the shame, man of God, three children, looking for his wife, who's been around probably the whole neighborhood. And eventually he finds and he walks into a market and he sees Goma and she's chained up. She's being auctioned off to the highest bidder. <laughs> And here's a guy, right, who gave us everything. And now all of a sudden, and here's the craziest part. Goma was like, hey, this is an expression of my freedom. I want to do what I want to do. It's my life. And all of a sudden, that expression of freedom has her in chains. Has her locked up. And it says... She was being sold for one and a half bushels of barley. Here's the craziest part. Goma, when you read Exodus, when you go into Exodus chapter 21, it tells you how much it is for, uh, for a slave woman. Goma wasn't even being sold at a full price. She was being sold at a discount price because she wasn't even worth the full price. She wasn't even second hands. She was just leftovers. Nobody wanted to even buy her. Whatever the asking price was, everybody was like, listen, I'm not even, I'll take her for free, but I'm not willing to pay that. And Hosea steps out in the scene and he goes, I'll pay whatever price you want me to pay. I'll, I'll take her back, just, 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 whatever the price is, I'll give you it, I'll take her back. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, wait, 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 wait a second. Hosea, isn't this your wife? She already belongs to you. You gave her everything. Why do you have to pay for her? She's yours. And this, this is the best metaphor. That shows where God sees me and you. And he sees and he says, hey, I'll pay whatever I need to pay for for you. You're know, like, well, don't they already belong to you? Because yeah, 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 but they've messed themselves up. They've got themselves in a trap. And so whatever the price is, I'll pay for it. And Hosea paid three and a half bushels of barley. God paid with his son.
Yeah. Hosea now owned her and could do whatever he chose with her. He could even kill her if he wanted to, because by law, <laughs> she was his <laughs> she was his property. But what does Hosea do? <coughs> Chapter 3, verse 3 says, you know, I'll tell you, Hosea told her, you must dwell as mine for many days. Stay in my house. You shall not play the whore because you're better than that. You're more than that. Or belong to another man because you're mine. And he said, so will I be to you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so will I also be with you. He tells, he tells Gomez, says, you're mine and nobody else, and I'm yours, and I belong to nobody else. Is that what you're going to say after you find out someone did that to you? No. But God does. <laughs> it's like, <That's> amazing. <laughs> That's the story of Hosea, and how many times we miss out on that story. Hosea is basically saying, I gave you everything the first time, and I was perfect for you, and you threw it in my face. And I'm coming back and saying, give me another chance. And he was the one always chasing after his wife. Yeah. yeah. And he's the one who paid the price. Yeah. He's the one who suffered. And she's just there. He gave her a chance to show that she was willing to change her ways and from now on to remain faithful to Hosea. He would provide for her, protect her, care for her, seek for her good, yet there would be a certain distance between them for a while. Only when she had proved herself to be faithful to Hosea would they resume a full relationship as man and wife. But Hosea said, listen, I'm willing to do anything to make sure that I can be connected with you again. Just think about that. No wonder he's known as the prophet of sorrow. Because he's crying for his country. Also in his personal life is like, baby, what do you want me to do? I've done everything I can for you. And you've thrown it in my face and, and, and I've picked it all up and I'm, I'm giving it again to you. I know. I know. And God uses this situation, this relationship, as an illustration to show his love for you and me. And he says, hey, listen, I came and I gave you everything and you threw it in my face. And I've always chased after you. I haven't given up on you. I've looked for you in the darkest places where I shouldn't even be going. And I'm asking you again, will you marry me? But you're going there, it's my fault. I messed up because I know I don't care. I don't care. I just want to be with you. The book of Hosea. Uh, he loved us while we were yet sinners. Yes. Um, let's just a couple of things before we finish off. Is uh, the first is Israel's terrible unfaithfulness. A couple of points in this book, you find out Israel's unfaithfulness. Uh, one, of the most uh, one of the most beautiful biblical pictures of a relationship between God and his people is that of a husband and a wife. Uh, in the Old Testament, God tells them, for your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is your, is your name. Basically, he says, listen, when you serve other things, when you take me out of focus, it's almost like you've gone and just cheated on me. And you, you realize how un unacceptable you would have have that in your relationship. You're like, 
if I was married to my husband and he cheated on me, it's not like he just comes on and asks for forgiveness. Like, this is a big deal. I ain't buying him back. <laughs> I ain't buying him back. <laughs> right? But God says, this is a big deal to me. I was like, I understand that. Like, when we sin against God, it's not that we've broken his rules, but we've broken his heart. And that's much worse because sometimes I'm okay if I do something wrong and I'm like, oh, I broke the rules, I'm sorry. But it's different when you're like, I broke your heart. You just, yeah, you just don't go, I'm, I'm sorry. But he fixed it. Yeah. He And God's like, it's, it's, it's not like a thing. Yeah, it's, it's like, that's why he says this is a relationship that we have. When we say, you know, it's a relationship about with, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. He goes, okay, don't forget the part as well. When if this is a relationship, when when you go the other side, you're not just simply breaking my rules. It's not like you come to me and go, and I'm like, you broke my rules. But he's like, man, you broke my heart. Why? What have I done? And it, you know, it's and the funny thing is, that, you know, when you read the book of Jeremiah. God asks his people and says, what have I done wrong? You know, he says, I, I've noticed you've sinned and you've gone the other direction. Is, it, is, it, is there something wrong with me? Can I improve? Can I change? Imagine God asking that, saying, what, what do I need to do? You're like, it's not you. Me! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um... The second part is God's amazing love, of which Hosea's love is a picture. This book is about God's amazing love. Yeah. And I think it, it tells itself in the story. And then lastly, there is God's call to genuine repentance. Like, he wants genuine repentance. He doesn't want us to just feel sorry for ourselves. Or we feel sorry because we got caught. Yeah. But to just say, I'm sorry because I, I love you and I don't want to hurt you. Um, the nation was steeped in sin, but they pe the people seemed to think that if they went through the formal religious rituals, God would sweep away their, their sins. But God wasn't just interested in their religious rituals. He was like, guys, I, I want your heart invested. If your heart's not invested in this, all the other things don't really mean anything at the end of the day. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that is essentially the book of Hosea. And here's the sad part about it, because... When we just look at history, I, I don't know about Hosea's personal life, but in contrast between God and Israel, even after God went and paid that price, time went by and they still left and went back to their old ways until eventually their sin caught up with them and this time there was no buying them back. <laughs> Never get to that point. Yeah. Um. Yep, that's the book of Hosea. <laughs> book of Hosea. Uh, let me see, what else did we miss out here? The spirit of. Spirit of uh, um. Ooh. You know, we read that. Let me see. I guess you can strive to yourself to the shameful ideas and become a uh, uh, Last thing to read here is, but more I quote is of the further that went from. Oh, read chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 2. Some things we'll just read here. 11, verse 2. 11, verse 2. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. Yeah, God's saying here is like, the more I called them, the further you went away from me. 
The more I called you, the further away you walked away from me. Read verse 4 for me. I, I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. So here's what I'm saying. He's saying, listen, you know how I, God's saying, you know how I called my people? I called them with a love. I was like, come back, come back. And it says, hey, you know what I did? Is I tied them up with love. And I even took that yoke off their neck. And then I bent down and I handed you food. And still. I fed you. <laughs> and then, I know, right? Read verse Verse 13, chapter 13, verse 6. According to the pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. God's saying, listen, when you were hungry, that verse I love it, because what he's saying is like, you were hungry, and I came, and I fed you. Then you got satisfied, and when you were satisfied, you forgot about me. I was like, yeesh. And then lastly, now this one is crazy. Verse 11. Of 13? No, sorry, yeah. Verse 11 of 13, yeah. I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. Yeah. So here's the thing. Remember when Israel was like a theocracy, there was no king, and they prayed and they said, we want to be like everyone else? God answered that prayer. But he answered their prayer by punishing... He, he punished them by answering their prayer. Isn't yeah. that crazy? And so we ask ourselves, what am I praying for? Because imagine God's like, stop praying about that, or I will answer it and teach you a lesson. And you're going to be like, God, why did you answer my prayer? And it says, in my anger, I gave you a king. It's basically, in my anger, I answered your prayer. And now you're going to get what you deserve. Yeah, any questions on the book of Hosea? That's it. Done. Boom. Kaput. Out. Oh, I don't know. Uh, probably, yeah, probably Hosea 6. Hosea 6. Yeah. Was Lebanon really nice at that time? Was what? Lebanon really nice at that time. Because <coughs> he's like, you shall go to Libya and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Um, you shall spread like the beauty and that's like olive trees. Is that, that verse? Like that. Is that verse five? Ch chapter fourteen, like the ending. Oh, chapter fourteen. Then, who is wise? You realize this, and it's the same. You understand the end of it. Well, what verse is it specifically? Just um, like five, six. Cause it first time, it's just I'm just wondering if Lebanon was like nice at that time. Cause how come it's like mentioned as a positive? Thing? We'll grow and spread out a bit like a little trees, for example. Lebanon, when we do again in the shade, um, it will flourish like a grain. It will blossom like a vine in its face. Be like Hawaii from Lebanon, um, or if you want more Hawaii to do with the idols, I'm gonna have to check that out. What does Lebanon mean here? Okay, um. Well, because I don't have all my material here, we're going to have to save this for the next class. But remind me about Lebanon. Uh, looks like that's the place to go right now, then. You yeah, actually don't want to go there right now. It's pretty dangerous. No, not right now. Yes, we'll check that out. Anything else? No, and we just read Hosea Joel, right? Uh, yeah, Joel is for... Oh, no, no. Excuse me. Oh, I don't even have my laptop here with me. Yes, the next assignment is Joel. Yes, Joel. Joel.
Joe is the next one to read. Okay. All right. Have a good evening. Take care. And we'll see you next month. Try and get Zion. Oh, yeah, Zion. Oh, is that recording? Did I press record on that? Yes, I did. Thank goodness. All right. I'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Tell Zion she missed out. Yeah. <laughs>